Hello everyone and welcome to another video spilling all of the Drag Race tea, gossip and drama. As we all know, Drag Race is a reality TV show which means there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes during production. So today we're going to be spilling the tea about some shocking Drag Race production secrets that you never knew about. Please just click that subscribe button and if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Best Judies Drag Race has changed a lot over the years and the format of the show itself is quite different to what it was originally intended to be. Although it's been said by many people, it was actually confirmed in an interview with Season 6's Kelly Mantle that the original concept for the show was it was going to be about drag queens and their best Judies, i.e. their best friends. Kelly said that she was offered the first season of Drag Race and the way they pitched it was as a mix between America's Next Top Model and Project Runway. The idea was that each contestant would be allowed to bring a friend who would be a stylist or costume designer slash hair and makeup person with you and you would all be living in a house together. This means that the show itself changed a lot and became the show that we now love today, but it meant that queens like Victoria Porkchop Parker were kind of left in a bad situation because she originally thought that she would be able to bring someone to help sew because she can't really sew herself and that obviously was not the case which is partly why she ended up being eliminated in the first episode. Also with some bonus tea about Kelly Mantle, she also said in an interview that she only got the list of outfits that she had to prepare for the runway six days before they started filming, which she explained is why some of the outfits that she had looked quite simple compared to others because she didn't have time to get even the most basic of outfits done, let alone get anything bespoke designed. The Confessionals as we all know, each contestant films what are called confessionals, which is when they talk about what's happening on the show and everything out of drag, and these are then interspersed throughout the episodes. What you may not know though is that the confessionals are actually filmed at different times and are used in different places. For example, in my interview with Juicy Couture, who appeared on Drag Race Holland season two, she confirmed that even though she was eliminated in the first episode, she actually had to stay and film her confessionals even after she was eliminated because the eliminations are filmed and then confessionals are filmed after each week's worth of episodes. The contestants are actually told to wear the same outfit for their confessionals so that the production can take any snippet they want of the confessional and use it in any part of the episode even if the person wasn't talking about that specific moment when they said it but because they're wearing the same outfit you can't always tell. The reason they introduced this rule was because in the earlier seasons you could tell when they had changed parts of the confessionals and taken it from different points. For example, in one episode in season three, Shangela was talking about one of her fellow contestants, Stacey Lane Matthews, and she was wearing this top that says Hallelujah with corn on it. And then in the very next second, they switch back to the confessional and Shangela is wearing a completely different t-shirt. And when you listen back to it, you can even tell that they've spliced these two parts of different confessionals but try to make it sound like Shangela was talking about the same thing when in reality these confessionals would have been filmed at completely different times. Eliminations. As we know at the end of each episode at least one queen is asked to sashay away and they then say that they go home after being eliminated although that's not actually always the case. For example, Monet Exchange, who appeared on season 10 and All Stars 4, said during Sibling Rivalry, which is her podcast, that the eliminated queens, for example, Vanjie and Callery, had been eliminated, but none of the queens were allowed to talk to them, but they still had the promo to film, even though technically those queens had been eliminated, they were still there. Whereas Ariel Versace, who appeared on season 11, said that the eliminated queens flew home and then had to fly back to the studio for the makeover challenge. And Ben de la Creme said that during All Stars 3, after her self-elimination, that she was made to stay in her hotel room until the end of the season because the queens had to come back to vote for the winner. 
Lip sync songs. As we know, the queens have to prepare a lip sync, especially if you're in the bottom two, and you are given an iPod with the songs on at the beginning of the season. And this is why you can often see queens with a headphone in during Untucked while they're preparing for their lip sync. But what you may not know is that the queens are actually given more songs than there are actual episodes, and they don't always know which song is going to appear when, and sometimes they also throw in fake songs that will never be used, but it's just so that the queens don't actually know which songs they need to prepare, so it's a bit more spontaneous. For example, Reggie B from Drag Race Holland Season 2 said during an interview that I had with her that she was actually given on the iPod around 11 songs, even though there were actually only 8 episodes. And the contestants are usually only told maybe a day or so in advance which song they'll be lip syncing to that week. They do often also change songs at the last minute. For example, when Jinx and Detox during season five had to lip sync, it was originally supposed to be a different song, but they changed it to Malambo number one at the last minute. And I've talked about this in a previous video, but it was basically because production were trying to favor Jinx and give her a song that they thought she could perform better in. But it does prove that they do change lip sync songs very quickly, even if it's just the day before, and the queens are often not given much notice. Gag order. As we know, the queens are not allowed to talk about the season before it's aired or even announce that they are on the show before it's been officially announced. But what you may not also know is that during filming, the queens are actually separated from each other even once they know who's on the show. The queens are often locked in their hotel rooms and are not allowed to talk to any of the other contestants at any point during the filming or when they're not on camera. This is to ensure that any drama that happens is caught on camera and doesn't happen off screen. The reason for this is because during some of the earlier seasons, the queens actually used to meet up in their hotel room and talk to each other, and any beef or drama that they had, they kind of resolved that off camera. So then when they'd come in the next day, the producers would say, oh, how are you feeling after your fight with this person? And because they'd already sorted it all and resolved it off camera, it meant it wasn't quite as good drama for the camera. So that's why the producers stopped the contestants talking to each other apart from when they're on camera even when they're for example in the truck going from place to place they're still not supposed to talk to each other under the counter RuPaul and the other judges are often all made up with good hair and makeup looking very glamorous and they sit behind a desk or a counter for the whole of the main stage what you may not know though is that what happens behind the counter it's been rumoured for a long time that RuPaul wears some kind of sweatpants that you can't see from underneath the counter while filming and is not actually in drag for very long. And this was actually proven during an episode of Untucked where you can see RuPaul returning to the main stage wearing some form of sweatpants. This is why Utica during the season 13 roast said, RuPaul, you're such a fashion icon. If you could please stand up for us. RuPaul then flipped Utica off and everyone laughed, but what you may not have realised is the reason they were laughing is because Utica was effectively calling out RuPaul for wearing sweatpants, and it's kind of an unspoken truth. Season 8 winner Bob the Drag Queen also confirmed this about the sweatpants and said in an interview once, quote, It is a known fact that RuPaul's dresses are in two chunks. Sometimes she'll work the runway and take off all of her padding and put on some sweatpants and Ugg slippers and walk around the studio. Everyone knows this. RuPaul gets out of drag from the waist down to sit behind the table, which I would do too. Suitcases. The queens apparently have a limit of five suitcases per contestant that they're allowed to bring with them. This might sound like a lot, but to fit in multiple and elaborate costumes as well as wigs, makeup and anything else, this isn't actually that much. However, this doesn't seem to be true for every franchise. For example, Envy Peru, who was the winner of Drag Race Holland season one, said that for their season, all of the queens were allowed to fill an entire truck 
with all of their outfits, uh, which seems very different to the five suitcase limit that the US queens have, which could explain why some of the people from Drag Race Holland had really elaborate outfits and were able to bring them to the show because they didn't have to fit them all in a suitcase. Double take on the runway. It's been confirmed by multiple queens that they walk the runway twice, once with music and once without music, so that the judges can record their funny little jokes and quips during the silent runway walk. They also do this to ensure that they can film the runway from multiple angles to always get the best shot. But this does mean that the contestants can hear the judges' funny quips during the time when they're walking the runway without music. For example, on season 7, Ginger Minge said during an episode of Untucked that she could hear the judges making jokes, for example, when Ross said that she looked like, quote, the other white leather. It's also been confirmed that any of the music or musical numbers are also filmed more than once to make sure that they get a good take. For example, Katia said that during All Stars 2, they filmed Read You Wrote You twice. For example, Katia said that in one of the takes, she dropped the fan that she was holding, but they actually ended up not using that part of the take and they didn't show her dropping the fan. The other reason this seems surprising is because if they do multiple takes, but they still show one of the queens messing up and going wrong. They must have had a take where they didn't do that, but decided to show the bad take. And then other times they seem to use the good take. Who's the winner? As you know, at the end of each season, one queen is crowned the winner. What you may not know though, is that each finalist is actually filmed being the winner. And so that way, none of the finalists actually know who is the winner of the season until they watch it on TV. So the audience and the drag queen contestants themselves find out who won at the same time. The reason they do it this way is to stop any leaks from happening as to who won, because this happened in one of the previous seasons when Raja won and everyone knew about it. For example, Bianca Del Rio said during an interview that during the season six finale, they filmed each of the three finalists winning, and they also filmed a tie between Bianca and Adore, which Bianca said she felt bad about because it was clearly obvious that Courtney was not going to win because they didn't film a tie with her. They only filmed it with Adore and Bianca. This is why they're able to film the reactions of the finalists finding out who they, who actually won because none of them actually know because they all film themselves winning and they only find out when the episode airs on TV. And the same also goes for the top four. For example, Bob the Dry Queen once said in an interview that during the season eight finale, they actually filmed Bob losing and being eliminated from the top four, i.e. not getting into the finale, even though she actually eventually did, but they filmed each contestant being eliminated so that none of them know who actually got into the finale until the episode airs. So there you have it. There are some interesting production behind the scenes secrets that you may not have known. Were there any that you think should have been included and weren't? If so, please comment below. And as usual, please don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe because it really helps. Currently, only about 1% of people watching are actually subscribed, which makes me so sad. So please, please just click that subscribe button. And if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you will join me again for another video in the future. Thank you, bye. Thank you.